Hey, what's happening guys? Welcome to my review of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man 2, arguably one of the greatest superhero films out there. Now with Spider-Man 1 I faced some major problem there, I, I couldn't really give a proper review there because I was constantly comparing it to the fact that it's actually my childhood and it's very tough to review something that was a part of you for so many years. Now with Spider-Man 2 I don't have such problems. Of course, uh, first of all, uh, Spider-Man 2 is a major improvement over first Sam Raimi Spider-Man 1. Tobey Maguire as Peter Parker, uh, he was great in the first film, even though we did have some complaints about him being a slightly bit an empty character there. Now, as I always said, Tobey adapted his own version of Peter Parker. Now, he takes a step further with Spider-Man 2 because his Peter Parker is even more relatable. His Peter Parker in Spider-Man 2 feels more of a did Peter Parker, the original Peter Parker, the Peter Parker how it was supposed to be done, he doesn't have time for people he cares the most, he's facing major problems such as financial problems, the problem with the girl he loves, and that is pretty much the Ditko's Peter Parker. And another great thing about Peter Parker and Spider-Man 2 is that in the first film, for example, uh, I really love the fact that Peter Parker was still Peter Parker and when he put the Spider-Man costume he was a completely different uh, guy there, just like Spider-Man is supposed to be jokes around he does his quips while wearing a mask and getting back to Peter Parker he's still pretty much a lonely loser type of guy and in this version you can actually see that his dilemma he experienced his psychological problems in this film constant problems uh, he faces in his life actually affect him being Spider-Man. Simply put, Toby really nails the role in Spider-Man 2. Everything, everything with him, I just love it. The scene where he gives up being Spider-Man, the scene where he comes back, I'm pretty sure so far it's his best performance in any films he starred in. This Peter Parker is the Peter Parker I want to look as an example, even after so many years. Uh, and of course, we've also got the Mary Jane Watson Kirsten Dunst. Now, uh, while I do have lots of problems with Kirsten uh, in the overall trilogy, I have to point out that her performance in this film is probably the best one. It's not really great, but it's the best, especially in comparison to her performance in Spider-Man 3, where she just forced her lines. Now in this film, it gets slightly a little bit better between Spider-Man 1 and Spider-Man 3. Still, that's not really Mary Chain I was looking for always, even back in, during my childhood. And of course, Harry Osborn, uh, James Franco, he did very well in the first film uh, here. Just like Toby, he just nails it. Uh, whole drama of the character, his search for Spider-Man, his search for vengeance. There is a scene where he actually takes Peter Parker's mask off, and we see so many emotions there. Uh, James Franco just uh, nails it, and uh, not every actor will be capable of uh, exploring uh, this character and showing everything he feels. You know, you can just see it there. And uh, of course, we've also got the villain here, Doctor Octopus. Now mentioning the actor himself, Alfred Molina. Uh, he's very great, he's very iconic Dark Ark. Of course, we're probably getting Dark Ark in the future Spider-Man films, in the new franchise still. I don't think it will be a very easy task to find somebody who will top him. Alfred is a great actor and his Dark Ark is very believable. Now, same goes for all the supportive characters such as Rosemary Harris, once again, great outmate there. Her chemistry between Peter Parker, you do believe that she cares for him, that she's actually his own. Same goes for J.K. Simmons, fantastic <laughs> Jameson there no comments really. Also, you know, talking about overall the characters, I really love uh, the way they approach Spider-Man in this film. This is basically the fall of the hero. He gives up being Spider-Man and while this film does really follow up the comic story perfectly, it does feature some great comic book nuts, such as, for example, the moment Peter Parker gives up being Spider-Man. He puts his costume away and uh, this is the comic book panel by John Romita. That's the straight up from the Amazing Spider-Man issue 50 where he gives up being Spider-Man. That's what I love about Raimi's uh, Spider-Man 2 and the pace of the story is just perfect. We see Spidey trying his best to fix his life, trying to do everything in time, but he fails at doing so. He doesn't have enough time for MJ, he doesn't have enough time for himself. Of course, you can complain about some plot details such as the way Spider-Man begins to lose his powers, which didn't happen in this particular issue, Spider-Man no more. Still, Sam Raimi somehow makes it believable, makes us feel for Peter Parker. And of course, this adds more depth to the character, to the whole dilemma of Peter Parker, not knowing if he should be Spider-Man or he shouldn't be, that's the big question in this film and it's explored very detailed and very great there. 
And of course there's the quite opposite character, we've got Spider-Man who kinda doesn't believe that he wants to be a Spider-Man anymore, he gives up his responsibility. And we've got Dark Ark who originally intended to create something for the greater good, to help humanity and being a good guy, he becomes a bad guy because of his own creations, basically the artificial intelligence, the tentacles who tell him what to do, and uh, quite an opposite character which makes him a perfect villain and uh, he appears there just when Peter Parker is about to realize that maybe I shouldn't be Spider-Man. That's the, one of the best aspects about this whole film. And of course the love story plays a crucial part in this film and uh, once again Kirsten Dunst not so great as it I wanted it to be, still the best performance there. There are some great moments when you can actually probably believe that uh, she feels something for Peter Parker in comparison to previous film. And of course the story of relationship between uh, Peter Parker and Harry Osborn, his best friend basically. Harry hates Spider-Man, he wants to kill Spider-Man and the easiest way to find Spider-Man is through his best friend Peter Parker which adds even more depth to his character and that's one of the great thing about Spider-Man 2. It doesn't introduce us lots of different characters with lots of different background stories. It's basically the same characters and they're explored even more deeply. And that is the sequel. That's why this sequel is better than the first uh, film, actually, Spider-Man 1. Of course, this film is also a huge improvement in terms of visual effects, in terms of the way Spidey swings. This is Spider-Man after all, and Spider-Man looks just like Spider-Man should on the big screen. Now, Sam Raimi managed to accomplish something fantastic here. There are certain scenes with certain camera angles, the way camera moves, which is just stunning. It's a visually fantastic feel. And the action scene, this film is action packed. Some of the fight scenes, such as the train fight scene, which is the highlight of this film, is arguably one of the greatest action scenes in a superhero film's history, that's for sure. It's just so intense. You just sit on the edge of your seat during the whole scene, even after so many years. And Spidey himself is just... It's a pleasure to watch this Spider-Man. It's a pleasure to watch him web swing. It's a pleasure to watch him crawl on top of the train just like a spider, coming up with the iconic Spidey poses and some iconic Spidey web swinging action, and basically it feels like comic book at certain times, which is great. That's what Spider-Man movie is all about. Now, finalizing the whole review, I'd like to point out that even though it's this my childhood, just like the first film, and I grew up with it, it has nothing to do with the quality of this film. It doesn't affect it at all. If this film came out today, I'd still enjoy it. Sure, there are some flaws, just like in every film. You Sometimes you ask questions like why Peter didn't tell Harry that he didn't kill his father, and some small details there which honestly doesn't care because you're on the edge of your seat during the entire time. You've got the train fight scene, then you've got a very emotional scene with Spidey and New York citizens helping our hero there. It's just great. And of course this film features one of the best, the most inspirational scenes out there in superhero films history, which is Aunt May's speech, the backyard speech, the scene which truly inspires you. Uh, for so many years it inspired me. The scene which truly makes you think the moment you want to give up something in your life and might actually affect the way you think at that particular moment. This scene is something you have to look forward to and maybe rewatch it because it's truly inspiring. This story isn't packed with villains, it's not really packed with the easter eggs of what's to come later on. Back then it felt uh, sort of a simple story. If you think about it, you know, Spidey just fights one villain there. What's more, right? But the characters, the way they, they are written, the relationship between characters and plus all the action there makes it uh, one of the greatest uh, superhero films, one of my favorite superhero films and makes it one of my favorite Spider-Man films. Tell me what you guys think down below, what's your favorite Spider-Man film and uh, what you think about Spider-Man 2. Thanks for watching and I'm up for now.